What up, everybody? Gordon Mack here from FlowTrack, and I have some breaking news. USATF just announced their 2021 Olympic team, and I feel like they made a huge mistake, a uh, clerical error or just an outright just travesty. I don't know what it is, but they picked the wrong team for the women's high jump. They're picking a lot of athletes. You're picking three per event, it's 18 events. 32. It's a lot of people to pick, but they need to make sure they get it right down to this women's high jump. The team that he selected was Vashti Cunningham, who finished first at the trials, Rachel McCoy, who finished fourth at the trials, and Tanita Butts Townsend, who finished 14th at the trials, leaving out someone like Anika McPherson, who finished second at the trials. And I'm going to break down why she should have been selected. She's 100% eligible to be on the Olympic team, and they should find a way to pick the runner-up at the Olympic trials to represent Team USA at the Olympics. I'm going to break it down of where they made a mistake and how they should fix it. So first, let's talk about what makes you eligible to be on the Olympic team. Winning the Olympic trials doesn't mean you're going to the Olympics. You have to have standards, right? You either have to have a world standard or a world ranking that is high enough in the world. So let's look at USATF's official rules. They say, we're going to read here this bullet point number three. The bullet point number three is the top three place finishers in each event at the trials men's and women's track and field, provided they have met the 2020 Olympic Games qualifying standard during the prescribed period, will self-select themselves via head-to-head -head competition for a position on the 2020 U.S. Olympic team. Basically, if you're top three and you have a qualifying, and you meet the qualifying criteria, you go to the Olympics. What are the qualifying criteria? Again, you either have to have the qualifying standard, in this case for the women's high jump, jump 1.96 meters, or qualified by virtue of his or her, her world athletics ranking position for that event, according to the rules of the rankings. So have the standard 1.96 meters or qualify via the world athletics ranking position. And they're equal. They're not saying one's more important than the other. You just have either or. And if USATF says, we want this person to go, as long as they have one of the other ones, as long as they fit one of those criteria, the Olympic Committee says, yes, you may come to our track meet in Tokyo. Okay, so let's see how it went down. Let's look at it. The Olympic field size. I got this Excel sheet. Look at it. I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to make it as clear as day. A couple of tweets can't really solve this problem. The Olympic field size is 32 athletes. You only get three per country. So in this situation, there will be 29 non-US athletes and three US athletes for a total of 32 athletes. So let's look at where we stand internationally and where the rest of the world is in the women's high jump. So let's take the top 32 non-US athletes. So it's not even including Vashti or any of the US athletes. 24 non-US athletes have the standard of 1.96 meters. So that means there's only eight spots left to fill, right? And if you go by world ranking, uh, Laverne Spencer is number one with 1,255 points. Then Anna Simic, I'm saying his name's wrong. So I apologize. An Italian athlete, Lithuanian. You get it. So 25th place would be 1,255 points, all the way down to 32nd. Sarin, Sarin Jewel. Oh, man, I'm, I need to look, work on my uh, vocabulary. Anyway, you get the idea. 24 women have the standard, and then the next eight here are the world rankings, and this is where they stand. Got it. And if you notice, what they do is they give priority. The Olympic Committee gives priority to people with the standard. So the only way an Olympic Committee will accept someone with the world ranking is if there's open spots from people after they fill all the people with the standard. So in this case, there are eight open spots. So eight people get to go to the Olympics via world ranking with the other 24 with the standard. Okay, now this is me ignoring U.S. athletes for the record. So let's go... To the Olympic trials, we have this trials top three. You're on Team USA. That's how it's supposed to work, right? Well, not so here in this uh, women's high jump. So I got the results here for the women's high jump. First place was Bashai Cunningham. Anika McPherson finished second. Nicole Green finished third. And on the right side here, I kind of have where they stand internationally. So Bashai Cunningham, she has the world standard. Rachel McCoy finished fourth. She has the world standard. Jelena Rowe, who actually finished dead last, she has the world standard. 
and everyone else has a world ranking. So there was actually only three women with the world standard. Uh, two of those three finished in the top four. Very good. Okay. So this is where we're at. So let's select our team, shall we? Okay, you're USATF. You see the results. You see who got first, Vashti Cunningham. Is she eligible to go to the Olympics? I don't know. Let's look. She is eligible. Look, she has a, a world standard. She's eligible. Eligible. Let's tell the Olympic Committee, hey, we want to send Vashti. She won our meet. She has a standard. We want to send her, assuming she wants to go. Pretty sure she wants to go. So we're sending Vashti Cunningham to the Olympics with the Olympic standards where she would fall on the list, right? But when you add Vashti to this top 32, the 32nd place person is going to get pushed out. So let's push out the 32nd place person right here. And I'm sorry, Marusua Cernjul. Can Slovakia, Slovakia, I don't know. You're out. Boom. Goodbye. So now we have a new top 32. So this is actually the top 31 non-US athletes plus one US athlete, which equals 32. All right. Let's go to second place finisher. Anika McPherson, you've made a bunch of world teams. You got second. Always finding a way to be top three. Congrats. Okay. Oh, you don't have the world standard. All right. But can you get it on world ranking? Let's see. Your world ranking points is 1,210. Is that good enough to fill in the field here? Well, look at that. Yeah, it is good enough. You finish right behind the 30th athlete from Great Britain, Borthwalk. So let's move this down. We're going to open up a slot there because clearly you're better than this Belarus athlete. And these, I, don't, I don't even know these countries. So I'm going to stop talking. Let's put in Anika McPherson. She got second. Boom. You're now 31st on this list. 32nd here is this belt. And this, third, this person is now out. I'm sorry, but Dusanova, you're not on the team anymore. Uh, no, you're not in the Olympics. So now this list is now top 30 non US athletes plus two US athletes. 32. All right. Look at this. So far, first and second are on the Olympic team. Let's go. Third place was Nicole Green. Ooh, okay. Nicole Green, 1,138 points. That's not going to make it. Look, 32nd here is 1,201 points. Nicole Green, all of a season, you got third at USA. It's pretty cool, but you're, you're, not, you're not eligible. You're not going to go. So cross you out. Let's go to fourth place because we want to get as many people on this team as possible. Top three. We want to send three athletes. Rachel McCoy. Oh, look, you have the standard. Okay. So let's throw Rachel McCoy in there. She has a standard of 1.6 uh, meters. So let's shift everyone down one. We're going to throw in Rachel McCoy, who has 1.6 meters. That's the Olympic standard. She is 15th. So we move everyone up, right? And I'm sorry, ooh, who was 32nd? Claire Orsell, now eliminated because you're not in top 32. So now we have our top 29 Non-US athletes plus three US athletes equals 32. And look at that. Hashtag. Boom. You are in there at fourth. Uh, Rachel McCoy was 15th. Technically tied for 15th. And then Anika McPherson, 32. Just barely made it, but you're in the top 32. USATF, this is your team. Your first, second, and fourth place finishers. See, it's simple. This should be the team. This is who should be going to the Olympics. Top 32, 29 non-US athletes, three US athletes. Fast size in because she finished top three and she has a standard. Rachel McCoy's in because Nicole Green isn't good enough to get in and she has a standard. And Anika McPherson's in because she finished second at USA's and her world ranking, 1,210 points, is top 32. So why is this a problem? Because I told you, they didn't send Anika McPherson. They sent Tanita Butts Townsend, who finished 14th at the trial. She didn't even make the high jump final, okay? She didn't even make the high jump final. Why is she on the team? Well, this is what USATF did. USATF did this. They looked at this uh, standard ranking list right here. And they went down the whole thing, and they're like, ooh, look at this. Ooh, Tina the Butts, Townsend. You didn't even make the high jump final, but we noticed 1,227 points. That would put you here 
on this list. And guess what? You could be in the top 32. And if we do this, all of a sudden, we can knock out our runner-up at the trials, Anika McPherson, and let in the 14th place finisher. This doesn't make any sense. USATF decided to give World Athletics view of our athletes more uh, weight than our view of our athletes, which is how you finish at the trials. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to try to keep the sanctity of the U.S. trials. You want to try to preserve top three and you're in as much as possible as you can. We couldn't do it in this situation 100% because Nicole Green didn't have the standard and her world ranking was way too low. But we were able to get at least first, second, and fourth in. So why are we choosing to let the 14th place person in because World Athletics will allow it? We should recognize, hey, World Athletics, we have two women from the U.S. who can both get in. Tina DeButts could get in as 30th. And Anita McPherson could get in at 32nd because you only get to pick one. You can't, we can't send a team of four. So if you choose one or the other, both of them are going to be top 32. So USATF should be like, all right, Tanita Butts, you're top 32 eligible. This is actually what they should have done. They should have done this. Let's put this, let's put this team back together. Uh, Rachel McCoy here. Vashti Cunningham here. Anika McPherson here. And uh, Tanita Butts here. Okay. They should have looked at okay, her points. Who is top 32 eligible, right? And, uh, excuse me. Just fixing this up. Standard. Standard. Sorry. My Excel. You guys are loving this Excel bone. We're going to do this. So this is what USATF did. They're like, all right, who's top 32 eligible? Okay. Dash is top 32 eligible because she has a standard. Uh, Rachel McCoy's top 32 eligible because she has a standard. Jelena Rowe, who finished dead last with no height, she's top 32 eligible because she has a standard. And then what they did was they said Tiana Butts is top 32 eligible, right? But they refused to say that Anika McPherson is top 32 eligible, which she is. Clearly, I played it out. She could be top 32. And so what they did is they said, oh, Anika McPherson, you're not top 32 eligible. Because in our world, in order to be top 32 eligible, you have to not count our four. It's, it make, I don't even know what I'm saying. It makes no sense. It's just, Anika McPherson can get in. She's top 30. I just, I did it in the beginning. I'm going all over the place. This would be like this. I want to play it out. What we're doing with these world rankings is we're treating them like time. Imagine in the, in the men's 1500. Uh, well, yeah, let's do the men's 1500. Men's 1500. Cole Hawker. Let's say he ran, he did, maybe we should do 1500. Let's pick a different event because that involves a rank. Let's pick one that only has time. Okay. So let's do uh, the women's 800. Uh, I'll do the men's 800. Men's, men's 800. Okay. So. First was Murphy. Second was uh, oh, damn it. Uh, Hopple was third. Um, oh my, uh, Jewett was second, and fourth, I believe, was Harris. Right? This was boom, boom, boom. Right? All four of these athletes had the Olympic standard, which I believe is one forty-five point two. I'm not sure exactly what the Olympic standard is, but all of them had the standard. They have. They have the standard, 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 standard. Now, let's just pretend that for some reason this result happened. And let's say Harris is PB. Actually, I'm going to change the men's 1500. And let's make it Hawker, Centro, Nagus, and uh, Angles. So these... He had the world ranking, but we're just pretending he had the standard. So USATF sent Hawker, Central, and the Goose. They did the right thing. But if you look at Angle's world standard, his world standard is actually faster than the Goose's world standard, right? 
So why didn't USATF select Angles? Because he has a faster PB than Nagus. Well, they didn't select Angles because Nagus beat him. And we don't care if you run five seconds under the standard or 0.01 seconds under the standard. We're going to send the top three if we can. So that's why Ang Nagus went over Angles. Even though Nagus, Angles is, so why do we do this here? We should have recognized who cares if Tiny the Butts has a higher world ranking than Anika McPherson. They both have a world ranking that is top 32 eligible, so they should be judged purely on their Olympic trials finish. In this case, Anika McPherson finished second, Tanya Butts finished 14th. I am rambling. All I'm saying is USATF made a big mistake, and we are sending the first, fourth, and 14th place finishers instead of the first, second, and fourth place finishers. Makes no sense. Anika McPherson should be in. Look at this. 29, 30, 31, 32. That's my case. Anika McPherson was top 32 eligible, and USATF chose to ignore that because they didn't want to think outside the box. I rest my case.